I'm going to present this paper joint with Franz Valaguer and uh, Chishen Wang. The paper is already archive, uh, arrival, uh, available at archive, also easy to see, and what is wrong. And so, okay, so we're starting by stating the main result of this, which, this paper. Uh, it's a complete characterization of uh, quantum log space from state testing. And um, so the starting point is defining what is uh, quantum state testing. Uh, so the task is, um, okay, so here we'll talk about the two-sided error scenario. Uh, the task quantum state testing just uh, given to quantum devices Q0 and Q1, and they are prepared like uh, polynomial many qubits uh, quantum mixed state, uh, row 0 and row 1. And also, uh, and this uh, state can be viewed as uh, sample assesses to uh, like a copy of you know copy of like uh, copy of the states. Um, we want to decide whether the distance of these two states is at most uh, epsilon one or at least epsilon two. Uh, and uh, of course, that's a two-sided error version. And actually, also uh, there is a one-sided error correspondent. Uh, so this is defined by uh, Ordinal and John Wright and I think uh, also Ordinal students. Uh, so called this quantum state certification problem. So the only difference is um, for the certification case, uh, we want to decide either, whether the state is um, or zero is exactly equal to one or the distance is at least uh, epsilon. And on the other hand, actually, there is a classical analog for this problem. Also, they call that closeness testing of distributions. So just uh, what we have is like a sample access to the probability distributions D0 and D1, basically we just draw samples from these distributions. And then we want to decide the distance of these two distributions that are like uh, at most uh, epsilon one or at least epsilon two. So the typical goal for all these problems just to uh, minimize the number of copies um, of the row zero and row one, and this is the so-called sample complexity or copy complexity. Um, but in this work, actually, we are viewing this uh, quantum state testing problem as a computational problem. So here, actually, we are talking about a promise problem. Okay. And in this work, actually, we are going to talk about four distance-like measures. Um, so the first two distances, uh, L1 norm and L2 norm. So in quantum case, we are talking about the trace distance uh, for the L1 norm. And the classical analog is a uh, total variation distance. But uh, in this work, there's, uh, in this talk, actually, I won't mention anything technical about the classical part. So I won't give even a definition for the classical distance. Um, for L2 norm, uh, we are talking about this uh, hair of the Schmidt distance. And besides that, we're also talking about the quantum entropy difference. So the quantum entropy, actually, we are using the definition of von Neumann entropy and also the Classically, we have the general entropy. And also, there is a kind of uh, distance version of the quantum entropy difference called the jensen shannon divergence. Um, so the quantum jensen shannon divergence, actually, I think it even appeared in the right-hand side of the hot level bound. Uh, but the, to best of my knowledge, like the people first defined this uh, quantity in this uh, result about uh, 15 years ago. And also, so you have some it's always a collaborator about like the generalization and uh, uh, how this class uh, compared to the persistence. Uh, so that's all the distance we are going to talk about today. And the quantum entropy difference is not really a distance. So that's why I'm using uh, distance like measures. So that's more or less the problem. And so now we move to the problem which actually investigating this paper. So since we're talking about uh, state testing, actually it's a computationally bounded state testing. So here we're talking, uh, so here is a space bounded quantum state certification. So we're starting by the one-sided error case. And so the, the, the problem just the given to polynomial size quantum circuit, which they are acts on logarithmic uh, many quantum qubits. And the circuits that are preparing another, like preparing a quantum, uh, sorry, the, Logarithmic states, qubits, quantum states, uh, actually the mixed states, and we know the source code of this uh, circuit Q0, Q1, so I mean the description of the circuit. Uh, so here, the, for one-sided error, the task is either decide either 
state is uh, rho zero is exactly equal to rho one, or the distance between them is at least alpha. Um, so the first means the result of this re of our work is um, the space bounded quantum state certification problem is uh, complete for the class uh, unitary call RQL. Uh, so here, call RQL, just uh, the, this, is it? okay. Yeah, uh, in this task, what, like, what do you mean exactly with access to their source codes? Oh, just, uh, we have a description of the circuit. So, uh, sorry, yeah, so basically we know the circuit uh, has which gates and which gates is X on the width qubit and we so called this uh, source code. And who has exactly. access to that? Yeah, okay. Oh, just uh, in the algorithm, actually, the description of the circuit is like is part of the problem. Yeah, I see. Okay. Fine. Uh, okay, so the class is uh, so here this capital U just uh, saying that uh, this class only talking about uh, unitary. And uh, the RQL just to uh, it's a one sided version of the BQL, which is a big, well, no, BQP is like for um, polytime quantum computation. So the, the BQL is for log space quantum computation. And this call RQL basically saying that we are focusing the case that we have perfect components. So to be specific, the, for this instance, it's accepted with probability one, and for no instance, it's accepted with probability at most half. Um, so we show that for this. Uh, with space bounded quantum state certification problem uh, regarding the trace distance and also the Herbert Schmidt distance. Um, this problem is uh, complete. Is there any question? Yeah, why is it called like this? What's the RQ, U, L? Uh, oh, I just, uh, okay. Uh, so, so you, um, Okay, uh, anyway, we will say a bit more about that later, but uh, here the L just for log space, and this uh, strange U just saying that um, there is no intermediate measurement in the competition, mm -hmm. there's only like a unitary case. And this call RQL, this call and R just you can think about it like just a requirement of like perfect confidence. Okay. There are other questions? Okay. Then we move to the second result. So actually it's a two-sided arrow case. Uh, so, so we have a similar, very similar space-bounded quantum state testing problem. Um, also we have like the polynomial size quantum circuit, which is acts on logarithmic many qubits and they're preparing to logarithmic many qubit uh, quantum states. And we know the description of the circuit, and we want to decide whether the distance, whether the distance is at most beta or at least alpha. Um, so for two-sided error, actually, we have two more distance-like measures. So, we are, so the this problem is uh, this family of problem is BQR complete, and uh, um, it's not not only works for the like the, for the chief distance and here for the Schmidt distance as, as the one-sided arrow case. Uh, here also there is um, quantum entropy difference and also like the a distance version of the quantum entropy difference, namely the quantum density channel divergence. Okay, so that's more or less the mean result. Uh, actually, there is a third mean result about technique, but I will mention that later. Yeah, that's uh, any question? Okay. Yeah. So. So first of all, the, uh, in this task, uh, you limit it to be polynomial, the circuits to be polynomial size. Uh, yes. Is there any reason not to go deeper in depth or anything adding that? Because this only limits uh, the depth of the circuit, right? Because you already limit the number of qubits to be log n. Yes. Is there a specific reason why, why this? Oh, the is? reason is uh, because we are talking about log space computation. Uh, then the input actually is the, the computational model. Actually, we have a, kind of something like a Turing machine, just but it's a read only tape. Mm -hmm. uh, and this tape is like a read only, so and also it's supposed to be like a polylens. Okay. So so then we define the circuit like has a polynomial size. That's mm -hmm. like the easiest way to talking about this question. Okay. 
I think another answer is that every unitary on log and cubics can be implemented with poly and gates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's... Other questions? So, so stupid question, but BQL uh, is the same as this class before, but then with two-sided error? So, uh, uh, not exactly, because for BQL, actually, you can do the intermediate measurements. Okay. And actually, you can do something like even measure in the middle and discard uh, the register which you just measured. Can you give a very short description of what BQL exactly is? So that I can... uh, just log space quantum computation, but uh, the gate is not necessary to be unitary gates. Uh, uh, it can be intermediate measurements, or you can even reset this to zero, something like that. And then with bounded error on both sides. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. so, so there's a bounded error for the both CS instance and node instance. Actually, well, I'm going to talk about the space boundary quantum computation with ah, a bit more okay. detail. Mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, so just like uh, I'm trying to, uh, you know, justifying the significance of the main result from the basically two part. So the first part is the uh, space boundary quantum computation. Uh, so here was uh, yeah, a bit technical thing. Uh, so here we're talking, so for one sided, for, sorry, for two sided error case, we're talking about uh, BQL and the unitary BQL. So here the unitary BQL just will only allow unitary gates. Uh, this class are defined by uh, John Walters, and that captures a quantum computation that performs by uh, log space uniform log qubit quantum circuits. Here, the log space uniform just means that the description of a circuit can be computed by a deterministic log space Turing machine. Um, this class actually has a few properties. So the first one is uh, what was showing that is uh, there is like a, a quadratic log space simulation bound of BQL. Um, of course, we don't know it's uh, optimal or not. So why? So that's the reason why it's here is a question mark. And then uh, we know this class actually is uh, gate set independent. Uh, this is because uh, one map. One well, Malkovich and Watson showing that there is a space efficient version of the Solovic that theorem. And also uh, for BQL, actually, because we can do the intermediate measurement and we set the, the qubit to be zero, and it's easy to do the error reduction by sequential repetition. But however, for unitary BQL, the even error, that, error reduction for this class is not trivial. So actually, it's uh, also to write a paper to do that. And at last is uh, there's a breakthrough by Furman and the Ramsquam um, two years ago. They're showing that actually allowing intermediate measurements or like a resetting could be to be zero, all this type of thing actually won't increase the power of the class BQL. So actually now the BQL and the unitary BQL refer to the same class. Uh, but for you will see that in the next page for one sided error case actually we don't have that so for one uh, for the one sided error case there's still like a, we don't know the different we don't know whether they are the same thing or not so besides and then besides the class itself um also there's I would like to say a little bit about the history of the uh, known natural complete problem um so the starting point is by Amon Tashma which uh, the main focus of this paper is like investigating uh, inverting a well conditional matrix is in BQL. And this task is only known to be in deterministic quadratic, uh, square log space. Um, as for the classical case. So it, it can be seen, seen as like an example of the, a classical simulation bound by Walters. Uh, so here, actually, in Tashma's construction, here we do need the intermediate measurements. Uh, but then, five years later, Furman and Ling, they're showing that for the same problem, actually, you can show it can be done by log space quantum computation, but we don't need the intermediate measurements. We only need the unitary gate. And also, they're showing the this problem is hard for the same class. Um, 
Okay, then, and then in this result by Fufferman and Ramsgram, they showing the equivalence of the case with and without uh, intermediate measurements by basically a, a sequence of uh, reductions. So then using this, uh, also we can see there is a family of the company problem. So basically it's a well-conditioned version of a bad company problem. They are all bigger companies. So like, like the instance like, like the, the well-conditioned integer determinant and a well-conditioned matrix powering also well-conditioned iterative matrix step. And so the takeaway of this slide is, um, so our second main result of the theorem 1.4 is showing that there's a new family of the uh, nature bigger copy problem. And also it's uh, imagined from the quantum state testing. So that's for the two-sided arrow case. Now we move to the one-sided arrow case, which is uh, even a bit more tricky. Uh, so this two class, unitary RQL and unitary core RQL is also defined by John Walters, but the notation we are using here is taken from the Furman and Ramsgram. And so basically the process captures a quantum, log space quantum computation with one sided error. And this class has a few properties. So first, um, actually even when Walters first talking, uh, tried to think about this class, there is error reduction. So for this classes. And then um, because we are asking here the perfect companies and perfect soundness, so actually we do have the gate dependence. So it's, it's actually the class is defined depend on the gate site which we are choosing. Um, the last thing is uh, what was supposed to talk about this problem is uh, because he showing that for this uh, undirected graph connectivity problem, and it is contained in unitary RQL, cut unitary core RQL. Uh, but nevertheless, this, this uh, problem actually to be shown is in L by Omar Ringo uh, a few years later. Uh, so for this one-sided arrow case, the uh, question is, uh, before our work, the question is, uh, first, we don't know any uh, nature company problem. Uh, either for like the unitary case or the general case. Uh, so there's a verification version of, uh, so the Fufferman Ram Scram showing that the verification version of the well-conditioned iterative matrix product problem, and it's actually hard for the class, mm. uh, but still there is no containment. And of course the containment is always a hard direction. Uh, on the other hand is, uh, we don't know whether there's uh, intermediate measurements or like the reset qubit, all these options, all these non-unitary options will either make this class uh, stronger or not. So takeaway for this slide is um, our first main result is showing that the first uh, complete, nature complete, first family of the nature complete problem for the class unitary call RQL. Sure, you can ask a stupid so, question. Uh, yes. RQUL is uh, one side error in the other direction, so you have to be sure whenever you're in the no gates versus the go RQUL. Oh, for okay, so for call RQUL for yes instance, you have assessment acceptance probability one. For no yes. instance, acceptance probability is at most at most half. Yes, and for RQUL. Uh, for RQUL, just I think uh, you have perfect. Soundness, so acceptance probability for no instance should be zero. Nice. And for yes instance, it should be like at least half, something like that. But of course, this, uh, the choosing of half is doesn't matter because we have our reduction. You can replace anything, yes. I think, by inverse polynomial. Okay. Uh, question? Okay. Uh, then we move to the quantum state test, uh, the computational quantum state testing part. So basically, um, this work actually is uh, defined the space bounded testing problem, but actually there is the previous work on time bounded state, test problem, state testing problem, even they are not using this terminology. Um, so we first define this task, time, this task time bounded quantum state testing. So here we are still like given two polynomial size quantum circuits, Q0 and Q1, and they are prepared like the polynomial in many qubits uh, quantum mix size, and we have the description of the circuit. So we want to decide whether the distance of them is at, more, at most uh, beta or at least alpha. And of course there is a classical correspondence, uh, this time-bounded distribution testing problem. 
So here, just to give two efficient example about distribution. Uh, by efficient example about distribution, I mean actually we have uh, two poly sized Boolean circuit, and we fit with random bits. And the circuit have uh, will output some the other bits, and that's basically equivalent to draw samples from the distributions. And the question for the time bounded distribution testing task is also decide whether the distance of the two distributions that most beta or at least are. Um, so for the classical case, actually, this problem is also referred to the statistical difference problem, which is uh, SDK complete. It's shown by Sahai Wadahan, and there is some tricky thing about the definition of the class. So actually, we need, uh, I need to mention the other work by Goldrex, Sahai and Wadahan. Um, but the issue is that uh, something kind of tiny issue is uh, the containment. The SDK containment here actually only works for uh, the parameter regime when alpha Square is larger than beta. So it's not like the user case, the R5 is larger than beta, and the promise gap between them is the inverse polynomial. And quantumly, because the total variation distance have uh, the quantum analog of this is um, kind of well defined. So um, what was it showing is defined a similar thing, uh, quantum state distinguishability problem, just uh, like task. 3.1 with three systems, and it's showing that this thing, uh, this problem is uh, QSDK complete. And of, of course, the QSDK containment is uh, only holds for, for the same, same regime because they are using more or less a very similar technique. Uh, so actually, it's even an open problem that for the um, nature regime, like the alpha and the beta is uh, Polynomially separated, whether this thing is uh, this uh, parameter regime the full S for the classical case is SDP, whether it's in SAK or the quantum case, like QSDP is in QSAK. Uh, so there is some recent progress by Berman et al., like a few years ago. Um, and they're basically showing that the the cost and the requirement of like the constant can be uh, like the the gap between alpha square and the beta can be made like inverse poly, um, but still we cannot make too much for that. Uh, that's for the classical case. And also I have a recent work showing something, try to do something similar uh, for the quantum work, but, uh, for the quantum problem, but actually we only can get something slightly worse. And besides that, there is something I need to say about the, this class QSDK. So first is um, contained in the class PQP. Sorry, it contains the class PQP and it's contained in the class QIP2. It's shown by watchers. So basically, uh, basically we believe that like the QSDK seems uh, harder than the class QSDK. Uh, sorry, the class is harder than class PQP. And then there's an Oracle separation result regarding, uh, originally regarding SAK and the PP, but uh, actually it also works, I think it also works for QSAK and the PP by Bob et al. So that's for the time-mounted quantum state testing post problem regarding the R1 norm. Uh, then we move to the R2 norm case. Uh, so actually R2 norm case is does not draw too many attention before. Um, so we can define this time bounded uh, quantum state testing problem regarding the Herbert Schmidt distance. And actually, this problem is a uh, big complete. It's kind of a folklore result. Uh, so the containment actually is fairly easy because uh, the Herbert Schmidt distance can be written as uh, some over three terms. So this three terms such as the trace of row zero square, trace of row one square, and trace of row zero times row one, they are all can be estimated by the swap test uh, proposed by Renard and Harry and uh, others. Um, so then uh, basically we have a very easy algorithm just to which is first toss two random coins, R0 and R1, then depends on the result of R0 and R1, we perform the swap test on the corresponding state. And then at the end of the day, this algorithm is accepted with probability is exactly the hair position distance. So that's for the continent. So the, for the harness, uh, we are using this uh, gadget from the result by Markwell and uh, his collaborators. Um, uh, still, it's kind of, uh, it's not something too complicated. Uh, so just the way, the construction is considering a uh, BQP circuit CX. 
Then we construct the new circuit CX prime, which just first applying CX, then applying X on the original output qubit. Um, then applying a C node, which is controlled by the orange output qubit, and uh, the target is on a new flag qubit, in initialized by zero. Then we do the the CX and X part reversely. And at the end of the day, we measure all the qubits on the computational basis, and we say this uh, new circuit C prime X or Z, uh, if all the measurement outcomes are zero. So by, a, by some calculation, we can see uh, the acceptance probability of the X prime actually is the square of the acceptance probability of the X. Um, so now using this uh, fact, we can define two pure state, which the first one just uh, the all zero state. The second one is applying the C prime X as like a, as a unitary channel on that. Do a pure state, and then the acceptance probability of the prime x is equivalent to trace of uh, one times zero zero, which is because they are um, pure states is equal to one minus the uh, Kerberschmidt distance, and that finish the proof. Okay. Uh, so until now. Um, it basically explaining like the for the time bound is they testing problem regarding the L1 norm and L2 norm. Uh, so something that's a bit interesting is uh, this thing there is kind of a deconomic theorem. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that because like for the time bound is testing problem regarding L1 norm, actually also for the quantum entropy difference, um, they are QSK complete, uh, which is similarly much harder than just preparing a state, which is something in BQP. But on the other hand, if we're talking about the L2 norm, then this problem is competition competitionally as easy as just preparing the state. Uh, so one possible explanation is that it may be linked to the dependence of the simple complexity for the distribution testing and the state testing problem. Uh, I mean, for, for the L1 norm case and also entropy difference case, uh, whether whatever the classical problem or the quantum problem, the sum of complexity actually is uh, polynomially depend on the dimension of the distribution or the state. So it's polynomially depend on n. And on the other hand, for the L one uh, for for L two norm, it only depends on the error parameter. Uh, that's basically what I'm saying for the time bounded uh, testing problem. Uh, so now I'm going to summarize uh, everything together. It's just uh, the time-bounded problem, also the space-bounded problem. So for the time-bounded problem, in a classical case, um, and the, for the L, something like the L1 norm and entropy difference, they are SAK complete. Uh, here is a star because uh, the continuance is not holds, it not holds for the other regimes. And for L2 is like a BPP complete, it's just like a prepared state and uh, basically more or less the same thing in quantum world. However, for the space-bounded case, uh, actually there's no result, uh, to best of our knowledge, there's no result about classical space-bounded uh, distribution testing problem. And we define, we first define this, uh, the quantum case, uh, the space-bounded quantum state testing problem. And uh, for L1 norm and entropy is, uh, Actually, for all this thing, it's a bigger complex, which is uh, kind of surprising because, like, uh, in the time bounded case, actually, it's, de it's depend on the uh, the chosen uh, the choice of the the distance. And for the classical speed bounded uh, problem, um, actually, we still can say something. Uh, first, actually, the the big the BP the BPL hardness for all the three distance like measures actually they are not too hard to show. Um, but on the uh, on the other hand, a space bounded distribution testing can be built as a white box version of the streaming distribution testing problem with RID samples. So basically, we, if we because we know the devices to to draw samples, basically we can draw the samples by the device, and then that can simulate the the RID samples. Then using this fact, actually. Um, we can see that for the L2 norm, this problem is BPL complete, and for entropy difference, there is some recent work on streaming distribution testing will imply that uh, this problem is also in BPL, but uh, we don't know 
up to, uh, to our, our knowledge, actually, I think we don't know any BPR complement yet. So that's more or less about this part. Any questions? Okay, if there's no questions, um, then I will move to the technical, the, the main technique, which is a third main result. Oh, just like the, the takeaway for this size is um, for the space bounded testing problem, uh, the computational hardness of this problem is uh, just as easy as preparing the state. So it's independent of the choice of the distance like And uh, So, okay. So this part is our third, res third main result, and it's a space efficient version of the QSVT. Um, okay, so I'm I'm starting by uh, briefly explaining what is QSVT. QSVT is a technique uh, posed by Andrew Skian, Yuan Su, and Huang Hao Luo, and uh, Nathan Libby. It's a systematic approach to time efficiently man manipulating singular values of an emission matrix A using a corresponding project unitary encoding A. Uh, here the projectors uh, to the pi and uh, I um, are just the orthogonal projectors. Um, so the QSVT is like uh, given a single value decomposition A uh, associated with uh, SN qubit project unitary encoding, we can approximately implement the QSVT. Uh, basically, it's applying a function F on the emission matrix A. And here, the, uh, the meaning of applying is actually applying it on the singular values. Uh, so we do that essentially is by uh, approximation polynomial PD of the degree, which is uh, one over delta times log one over epsilon. So basically, uh, the, so this uh, polynomial satisfying two property. The first one is uh, the polynomial PD actually well approximate PF on the interval which we are interested in. Um, so it's, um, the, by the interval we are interested in actually is um, it's a subset of the interval from minus one to one. And also we don't care what happened uh, if it's very close to the original point. Uh, on the other hand, this polynomial should be bounded on the whole interval from minus one to one. And besides that, class VT requires that all the coefficients of the polynomial, actually it's a classical preprocessing, can be computed in the deterministic uh, poly-D time. So surely the space Upper bound is also poly D. Uh, so, therefore, the, the QSVT um, can be implemented, the uh, construction is like the QSVT can be implemented by a poly D size quantum circuit, but acts only on like log maximum of log D or S qubits. Uh, so, comment is uh, first, the here actually the QSVT is consistent consist consistence of two steps. So the first step is the classical preprocessing. The second step is the quantum circuit implementation. And the quantum circuit implementation itself is already space efficient. And the question is, could we make the first part, the classical preprocessing, space efficient? Uh, so then, then just uh, lead to our question. So the space efficient QSVT is asking, can we implement a degree D QSVT for any SN qubit project unitary encoding? Um, okay, if we take the SN here to be log, then the degree is at most some polynomial and using only like the log to log space in both classical preprocessing and the quantum circuit implementation simultaneously. So fortunately, actually, there are some partial solution. We have written the partial partial solution by there is by the paper by Matthew and Yan. Um, they showing that there is a kind of we can do that kind of a space bounded version. Uh, so what they did is uh, they can implement the degree D class VD associated with uh, this specific uh, sine function and the square root function. Uh, so for any uh, for any log qubit block encoding and the degree is at most polynomial. Uh, this requires uh, then the classical preprocessing requires like a uh, polylog spaces and the uh, circuit implementation using still log qubits. And uh, actually, their technique can be very easy, very easily extended to the any continuous function which is bounded on interval from minus one to one. 
So our result is uh, more or less solving the question 4.1. Uh, so we show that we can implement the uh, degree decrease weighty associated associate with any piecewise move function uh, for any log qubit uh, bit string index encoding. So here this bit string in in index encoding is something between the block encoding and the projecting literary encoding. Um, and uh, the Classical preprocessing in general is can be done by randomized uh, log n space. And also the quantum circuit implementation can be done in log space. Uh, however, for some specific functions, such as the sign function, actually uh, the preprocessing even can be made deterministic in log space. And moreover, the cost is uh, implementation uh, requires uh, like the d squared times the L1 norm of the coefficient vector. The L1 norm of coefficient vector is at most d. So, um, on the, in the, so in the worst case, it's basically like the cube d use of the u and also control the uh, projector. So here, the this vector c just the, the coefficient of the typical interpolation polynomial. Okay, and uh, for the piecewise smooth functions, uh, so one natural example is this normalized log function um, because it's only defined on an interval from beta to one. And if it's very close to zero, then it will be like close to infinity. Yeah. So any questions or maybe a lost model for people? <laughs> Okay, if no question, then I will say a little bit about the proof. So, okay, so here is the sketch of the proof. Uh, so first we are dealing with a bounded function. The proof strategy is actually more or less follows from the result by Matija and Yan. Um, the second point is, is a very old result by Powell. Um, uh, it's a thing that the uh, chip shift interpolation can do the nearly minimax approximation. So basically, for any continuous function f and on the interval from minus one to one, if there is a degree d polynomial satisfying that the pd is um, well approximate f on the whole interval, then we have a chip shift interpolation polynomial, which is a linear combination of uh, Chibyshev polynomial of the first scan, such that the uh, error between this uh, hat p d and f is at most uh, epsilon log d. So here the coefficient c k or can be computed by some interval. And then after having that, uh, we can do the specific curiosity like for using the following facts. The first one is for the Chibyshev polynomial. In the orange paper by Andrew Skian et al, um, they noticed that actually the curiosity implementation for uh, Chibyshev polynomial is already specific efficient. This is because we even have the analytic solution to the classical preprocessing problem. And then for any bounded function, uh, actually the coefficient CK is uh, specifically computable by uh, standard numerical integral techniques. Um, actually, this step is uh, conceptually easy, but actually the uh, calculation is a bit ugly, and actually we need a bit careful analyze here. And after that, then we know that we can because we can implement the QSVT for each TK and we know how to specifically compute the coefficient CK, then we can use this uh, linear of linear combination of unitary technique by Barry, Charles, Cliff, Kotari, and Sova um, to implement uh, this polynomial at PD. And then here the query complexity to the U and the controlled projector is D squared because we are sum over TK from T1 to you know, TD. So it's like just uh, the, the query complexity is just one plus two double on to D. So we have the query complexity square. And the issue is uh, the, the encoding we have for the 
HPD exon, the, this uh, tilde pi u pi is a logarithm norm of this is at most uh, the L1 norm of the coefficient vector, which is uh, usually larger than one. Um, so actually to do chaos weight, we need to make sure that the operating norm of this thing is at most one. So there's an additional step to renormalizing the resulting encoding. And this step is uh, essentially it's using uh, amplitude amplification, but we can do that using class with T. And then, which makes the query complexity slightly worse from D squared to um, something like cube D. Uh, actually, this uh, R1 norm of the coefficient vector can be make log D for some functions like a, a sign function. So that's more or less finishing the proof for the bounded functions. And for the piecewise smooth functions, uh, we need another trick is uh, by we thought by Renard and probably a lot of people here or was here. Um, yes. yes. Yeah, the question. Uh, you're talking about query complexity here, but what is the object that's being queried? Oh, oh I just uh, the, the meaning of query complexity here, just the, the number of uh, the U and also the controlled projector, uh, the uh, control, control to pi, the number of use of that. Oh, I see the application of the basic block encoding that you started. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. And so their technique is using the, I think it's a low degree Boolean polynomial or something to, anyway, it's uh, just a re, just uh, like a reduction from the piecewise smooth functions to the linear combination of uh, bounded functions. So still the, the main challenge actually, the, the quick, uh, like the, the crucial part is to compute the coefficient in this uh, linear combination. And it turns out we can do that, we can reduce this problem to the stochastic matrix pouring problem. So basically it means that we can uh, estimate this coefficients by the random work in log space. And this problem, stochastic matrix pouring problem is uh, essential for BPL versus L problem. Uh, because starting from tax show, uh, they use that to show that the BPL, the BPL is equal to L. And also this uh, recent result by Tesla, Corn, and others. Um, and to uh, additional remark is actually, similarly for this problem, if we want to do that deterministically, then we only can do that in SV2. Yeah, so I think that's more that's uh, for technical and questions. Okay, good. Uh, so now basically I'm explaining the three main result of this work, then, uh, then I'm going to use the, the mean proof technique to show the mean result actually only for the three systems. Uh, we're starting by the two-sided error scenario, namely the space-bounded to corner stay uh, testing problem for with respect to the three systems. Uh, so our construction is inspired by the approach uh, in Gien, Polamba, and also uh, my collaborator Chisheng Wang and uh, Zhang. Um, so we have a uh, approximation polynomial p sine d for the sine function, and uh, we can notice that the three systems of this two state can be written as uh, a sum of two terms which uh, the first term, just uh, the trace of the row zero multiplied by the sine function applied on uh, row zero minus row one divided by two. And we can define something similar regarding row one and the difference between them is uh, essentially the trace distance. So the algorithm just approximate uh, these two terms uh, separately. And so we define something kind of a quantum tester, which essentially is a quantum circuit um to approximate the, the quantity we want so here the qi just uh, the circuit uh, to prepare the purification of the state we are interested uh, the state like p0 and p1 uh, like row zero and row one and then the, the main construct is using this one bit pre one bit precision uh this estimation also people usually call that the harma test um and at the end of the day, we say this uh, this tester accept if the measurement outcome is zero. Um, so by using our specific QSVT in the theorem 4.3, actually we can implement this uh, huge unit right here. So it's efficiently. Um, 
And so then we can see the acceptance probability for regarding rho. Uh, I essentially is uh, it's linearly dependent on the quantity we want to uh, estimate. And so therefore, it's um, for I is either one or zero. It suffices to estimate this quantity with uh, additive error uh, with high probability using like a one over epsilon square sequential repetition. Uh, this is because like uh, we know like unitary of uh, right. Uh, this is because the sequential repetition actually we are doing the basically we are resetting every, all the working qubit to be zero after each iteration, so we can do that again. Uh, that's the proof for the two sided arrow case. And uh, then I move to the one sided arrow case. Uh, so, uh, so the proof for one sided, oh, uh. Maybe if I also say something about uh, the entropy difference. So actually for entropy difference, we are using the uh, same gadget like that. Uh, just uh, here, that the U here actually is not using the poly polynomial of line function. We are using the polynomial of the normalized log function. Then we can do something uh, very similar. Okay, now we move to the one-sided arrow case. Uh, to do one-sided arrow case, uh, we are still using this uh, that's test t, we just defining the previous slice, and then we need to achieving the perfect components by some standard technique. Uh, so the key observation is um, we notice that our space efficient class weighting theorem four point three is preserves the parity, which means that uh, the class weighting implementation associated with uh, the hat PD sign function satisfying that uh, if we fit the a zero operator to the chaos weighting implementation, then we'll get a zero operator. Um, this observation will enable enables us to construct uh, the algorithm we want. Um, so the algorithm is supposed to specify like for yes instance, if row zero is equal to row one, then uh, the tester is a set with probability exactly half. Um, then the algorithm A here just uh, using an exact amplitude amplification to make sure uh, we are set with probability with uh, probability one. And uh, a bit tricky thing is for no instance. Uh, so for no instance, we are guaranteed that the distance between row zero and row one is at least alpha. And then we can see that the acceptance probability of the tester T um, is actually alpha far from half. And then by uh, direct, uh, a bit complicated complication, cal calculation, we can see that uh, the algorithm are set with probability at most one minus uh, alpha squared. Uh, of course, for now, of course, until now, the algorithm A, we have, have a promise gap, which was polynomial, but we can make the gap to be constant by the error reduction for the unitary call QL. And uh, this R reduction also can be done by all three fish class weighted, and that's the uh, finished uh, proof. So, any questions? Oh, maybe I also can say something for the L2 norm case. So, for L2 norm case, we are not using the tester, or uh, we are essentially we are using a sub. Uh, a block encoding of swap test. This is because, like the for the arch distance, the so Hilbert Schmidt distance, it can be written as three times. Uh, so basically, basically that define the block encoding. Then we can do something similar like that. Okay, that's more or less I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to summarize uh, the talk and also uh, list a few open problems. Um, so, for, so take one message for this talk is um, uh, first, uh, space bounded corner stratification problem with respect to the tree systems and hypersmith distance, they are unitary QR complete, which is the first family of the uh, initial complete problem for this class. And on the other hand, if we are additionally allowing two sided error, then we can show this problem is bigger or complete for uh, uh, two more distance like measures. So, the space bounded quantum testing problem uh, with regard to uh, two systems and uh, Hilbert Schmidt systems, also the quantum attribute difference and the quantum transition, transition divergence, they are all become complete.
And the last thing is uh, we proposed a space efficient version of the QSVT on this uh, bit string index encoding, which is a, a kind of a generalization of block encoding. And this can be done in quantum log space and uh, the classical preprocessing is also in log space, but randomized. And then there are a few open problems. Uh, so the first uh, question uh, is a bit technical. It's about the space efficient QSVT. Uh, one thing is like the, the query complexity here is like a, a cube D or like D squared times log D depends on which function we're talking about. But usually this uh, query complexity is just D. So could we make this D also space efficiently? And another question is uh, our, our classical preprocessing for any uh, piecewise move function is um, is randomized. Could we somehow make this uh, deterministic? It is a bit challenging because, like as I mentioned before, this uh, the stochastic matrix scoring problem is kind of like only known in NC two for the deterministic case. Uh, the second question is uh, since we talk about a lot of uh, distance like measures here. Uh, maybe we can say something even more general, for instance, like for some proper quantum analog of uh, symmetry F divergence, uh, for this kind of thing, also we can show is in BQL. And the last question is about the space-bounded uh, distribution testing with regard to the polarization distance. Uh, so could we show this problem is also in BPL? And also does our proof uh, can also implement something about the streaming distribution testing? So that's what I'm going to what I'm talking about today. 